Welcome back to the Jimmy Dore Show here. Pasta Jardula, Kurt Metzger, and JD in the house. So keeping listen, it clean, baby. <laughs> keeping it clean. <laughs> Want to jump right into it. Thank you, guys. I'm learning as we go along over here. But uh, yeah, it, this is a story right now that really is really upsetting uh, because this is something we went through for the last several years. There's a lot of us who got on top of the whole ivermectin story uh, out of the gate. Um, we had heard about it. We had heard about what it could it could do, how it could actually be used as a therapeutic. And no, then wait, there was, this is the horse medicine you're talking this about. This is the horse okay. medicine. What <laughs> not. The horse I think it's important to give that context. Yes. That is for yes. horses. It is for horse medicine, but also this medicine, Kurt. You know, the as they ad- adapted it to human form, it won a global peace prize. Right. It's been off patent for several years, which meaning that other companies can make it knockoff style. They can just make it generically, and they can mm. sell it. Uh, for very cheap. And the whole sad part about this is there's a lot of people who knew that this worked. But now, breaking news, the FDA lawyer announces that ivermectin can be prescribed for COVID-19. Now, when you say that you know know that it works, I mean, it works for certain things. It certainly doesn't work for COVID-19, Craig. No. No, no it doesn't. No. Yeah, and by the way, don't ask your doctor about it. And I don't. know normally we... <laughs> no, yes. Normally I would say definitely ask your doctor... <laughs> To write this prescription for you. <laughs> for the humans. This part is come in and well. tell him what to give you. This is the first drug in history that Big Pharma says, please don't ask yeah. your doctor to write a prescription. Script don't short. ask anyone. I don't, <laughs> don't this ask, FDA yeah. guy, I, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know about this. But the lawyer uh, said now that they can prescribe it and they're not going to, you know, hold back and they're not going to demonize or whatnot. There was a whole campaign on this to kind of demonize when it came to ivermectin, even though it doesn't work. Supposedly, and they yeah, recommend. But it's dangerous. You could go blind you and get go, shot. Yeah, sure, yeah, you could get shot, <laughs> dude. Kurt, <laughs> twenty people out of a couple billion have <laughs> have died, according to the how many? Twenty. Oh, 20 wow. people. Twenty people. Wow, that's a lot. No, yeah, out of a couple billion. <laughs> some people would say. Some doctors might say. Doctor Merrick used to say that it's safer than aspirin, but. Nevertheless, well, I mean, that would make it safer than aspirin by yep. like a lot. <laughs> That's like one of the number one overdoses. That might be bigger than heroin. So Tylenol. Check this out here. In a major narrative uh, reversal, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, said that doctors are free to prescribe ivermectin as a treatment for COVID-19. This admission made by the FDA attorney appearing before the United States Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals is in direct contrast with the organization's messaging during the pandemic when ivermectin, ivermectin was labeled a controversial horse, horse to warmer. warmer. Yeah. Was it, con- wait, was it controversial among the horses? Why? <laughs> 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 no, don't even mention that to my horse. He gave- <laughs> the FDA explicitly recognizes that doctors do have the authority, do have the authority to prescribe ivermectin to treat COVID, said attor- attorney Ashley Chung Hunold during oral arguments before the court on Tuesday. The Fifth Circuit is in the process of hearing a case brought by three doctors who allege that the FDA overstepped its boundaries with its public information campaign against human consumption of ivermectin. Remember this? Yes. Right here. You're not a horse. You're not a cow. Seriously, y'all. Stop it. Oh, th- th- good Good work throwing a y'all in there. So y'all. it sounds really sciencey. So that's the FDA being yeah. completely captured by Big Pharma. That's what that is. Who's supposed to stop what, it? What they're saying is, please don't try this drug that is unbelievably safe uh, and and possibly could work on COVID-19. Please don't even try it. When have they ever d- done that before? When have they even told... told anyway, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting ahead of they're it. They're not no, even no, no, saying no, what to you, stop. Like you, It's not over the counter. You have to have a doctor prescribe right. it. You can't just walk into so a, who's a stopping right? it. No, no, what? Stop it, y'all! So what? The, what the FDA will say disingenuously was that we were referring to people who were taking the veterinary version of it that you could get at a, 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 a some kind of feed store or something, and that's not what they were you doing. Mean no one. That's a oh, lie. That's I suspect not what they, no one did that in in human history. I, I bet you actually they, they they say they have these stories of people who did that. Yeah, I, I haven't heard it. of it or the people who took hydroxychloroquine out. Of a fish tank or something. Yeah. I think they paid those people to do that. <laughs> okay. Just like the FBI goes and rounds up these mental defectives to go pretend to do terrorist attacks, but it's actually the FBI <laughs> doing them. Yeah. I think it's the same thing. They got some mental defective to take hydroxychloroquine. They paid them probably. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask. I mean, you, you know, I, I can only speculate 
on why they said you couldn't do this. Because remember, it was FDA approved. It just wasn't FDA approved to treat COVID. That's the whole thing. That's it right. It was off patent. So a doctor, technically, Doctors if it was are, FDA approved, should have been able. Always are able. To, that's, but, yeah. that, that's just, med that's called practicing medicine. medicine. Yes. So, so you're always able to, if it's already been approved to, for human consumption or whatever yes you can then prescribe it for anything if you're a doctor that's called practicing medicine Go okay ahead, wait ahead. it sounds unco like kind of non-committal so they're just saying we're not going to arrest anybody and you have the authority to prescribe it yes is that's that what some way saying. to do it without saying yeah, do it? yeah. Well, there was threats then then to taking away your license suspending your licenses you know what I'm and saying? so now they're going to court yeah. And they're, they, the, it, the law is being applied, and they're like, okay, of course you can do it. Of course we're going to have to treat this like every other drug in the freaking world. We're going to have to allow doctors to, of course, because there's no reason to not. Yeah. They can't tell a judge, but they can, you know, they can tell Anderson Cooper and Rachel Maddow bullshit like that. You know, uh, Dr. Fauci can sit there and talk to Stephen Colbert and say it's dangerous if you take it. Remember, I showed that video and I was like, really? How dangerous is it, Dr. Fauci, if you take ivermectin? Is it more dangerous than Tylenol or less dangerous than Tylenol? Is <laughs> well, it more dangerous than aspirin or less? He never gave a qualifier. Well, he just said it was dangerous. It so dangerous just lying. to my residual payments. <laughs> that's the right. But they can't do that to a judge. And so that's why now the FDA. FDA has to say, of course you can use it. You see this doctor right here, the first one, Dr. Paul Merrick. I've had Dr. Paul Merrick on my show. I've spoke to him before, defeat the mandates. He's a great guy. He was forced out of his position working in the ICU for years because he was prescribing, allegedly, I'm only speculating, he was prescribing ivermectin, years at his job, was thrown out on the street. And really, to tell you the truth, when you talk to a lot of these doctors, when they lost some of their position, it really affected them. See, I took the time to take a look at doctors like Paul Merrick and Dr. Pierre Corey and some of these other doctors. Robert Malone. Robert Malone, McCullough. And I looked at their record before COVID. COVID. I looked at their doctor's record online from their patients, and they were all top notch. Mm. That's why it was very easy for me to listen to these doctors, because they had a great records amongst their patients. It was only when COVID hit that they became quacks, That's right. crazies, don't listen to them, nut jobs, the whole nine yards. Now, this is something that was put up here right now. There's three reasons why ivermectin was blocked by Fauci, Gates, the WHO. I like that this guy put the DOD. Very important. They blocked it? Okay. The WEF, the CDC, FDA, and the media. Well, it was a concerted effort from everybody together, right, to make sure. And the media was aiding and abetting. They went lo right along with it because who pays their bills? Who are they sponsored by? Pfizer and all the other companies. One, no declaration of a pandemic is known if there's some successful treatments. Number two, no emergency use authorization for experimental mRNA injections never given to humans and no EU for the killer drug remdesivir. So pretty much states, if there's other alternatives, you can't bring a vaccine to market, even though it's the most safe and effective vaccine ever made in the history of vaccines in only six months, and usually takes about eight years, still safe and effective. You can't bring it with an emergency use authorization if there are other therapeutics out there. So if they know that ivermectin is, is good or, or hydroxychloroquine is good, you can't get your emergency use authorization. So there goes trillions of dollars out the window. So on the off chance that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine could treat COVID-19, they couldn't take that chance. And so they demonized it. And they demonized anybody who talked about it, and they made everybody afraid to even bring it up. In fact, it made us afraid to even bring it up because we might get our uh, channel taken down. Wait, are you allowed to talk about it, even though they can prescribe it? So I, I, we had to, we weren't allowed to say we, we still can't say, and I'm oh, not saying yeah. that it treats COVID nineteen. I can't say that. Uh, I, I guess we can say now that the FDA says that doctors can prescribe it for COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. So we can say that. Yeah. So I just have to be careful because it doesn't matter actually how careful I am. YouTube can do whatever they want. It's their it's their playground. But anyway, we got to at least try to, you know, yeah, yeah. skirt skirt the rules. And you can't bite over the counter. They tried. There was a bill that was passed, I believe, in New Hampshire that they were going to sign where you can buy it recre recreationally. You know what I'm saying? They, buy what recreationally? Ivermectin. Well, how would you buy like that? This. Like it would sell it over the counter. They, that's not that's like, called recreation. Like if you're at a pinball arcade or something and you they had a <laughs> <laughs> recreation like claw and you yeah. get some ivermectin. Rec recreation, well, I mean, you can buy them recreationally. <laughs> you mean over the counter? Over the counter. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in, in Nicaragua, less than fifty cents a pill. 
less than 50 cents a pill in Nicaragua, Brazil. And so they say, a lot yeah. of people say that, uh, you know, in Africa, they take hydroxychloroquine every Sunday and they take ivermectin all the time. Yes. And so I'm not saying that that, that treats COVID. That's not what we're well, saying. For parasites, but like, they, they, they do have the lowest, they did have the lowest rates of. Because they were taking it as a prophylactic for river blindness and other parasitical diseases. But guess what? And it turns out that those also has antiviral properties. And they, they knew about it. Because you can go back and look, and there are pu papers and... published at the NIH yeah. that say that, oh, we have seen uh, that ivermectin works in this lab to fight coronavirus, not COVID-19, but they knew that it maybe could, that this antiparasite has also antiviral properties, and they were afraid that it could treat COVID-19, and if it could, they couldn't get their emergency use authorization for the vaccines, and there goes a couple of hundred billion dollars. And that's not good for Bill Gates. And that's so, not good for Bill Gates. Uh, you know, Dr. Carol Swain, how many people lost their lives before uh, we reached this point? How many media articles mocking the doctors who tried to prescribe this drug uh, cocktails they knew worked? Oh, there's a missing K. That threw me off. I know, but I, I was able to battle yeah. through it. <laughs> so this was this was the breaking news the other day. Uh, this is uh, Senator Ron Johnson. Now, I don't care if you like Senator Ron Johnson or you're not. He's still a senator. And this is how much they censored this guy. After the first defeat, the mandates in D.C., they all the doctors the next day went for a Senate hearing. YouTube took down his video of his Senate hearing almost immediately. A senator with all these doctors, they took down his hearing. That's how much they wanted to suppress this information. Here's Maria and uh, Senator Ron Johnson. Take, take a listen. We, we learned this morning that the FDA is now saying that it's okay to take uh, ivermectin uh, if you have COVID. I mean, Senator, I remember talking with you repeatedly during COVID about your upset that you were they were trying to cancel you because you were talking to doctors to try to find out the right ways to treat covid without having to get too many boosters and 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 covid shots my covid was gone in a day when i took ivermectin and now three years later the fda says oh yeah that's fine take ivermectin what yeah, Marie, you know the doctors I've been uh, dealing with and talking to for years now. Uh, they, they believe that probably hundreds of thousands of Americans lost their lives because they were denied early treatment. And they were denied it because the FDA sabotaged, for example, ivermectin. They said, come on, y'all, you're, you're not a cow, you're not a horse. You know, this is this was supposedly horse medicine. No, this is a Nobel Prize winning uh, medicine that, that could, could have saved hundreds of thousands of lives. It did save many, many lives because people, you did have doctors with the courage to, uh, and the compassion to actually treat patients using it and putting at risk their medical license. But you know, fortunately, you say, what can we do? Well, you know, we do have reporters like yourself, like John Solomon, other people that have the, the courage to report the truth against the mainstream media Jamie and against the show. narrative. But that's the only way this is going to be solved. He didn't, he didn't we mention need our show. the truth <laughs> to be exposed. We need more Americans to listen to the truth to be exposed to the truth, to pull their heads out of the sand, quite honestly, open up their eyes and understand what is happening in this country. We are going down a very dangerous path, but it's a path that is being laid out and planned by an elite group of people that want to take total control o over our lives. And that's what they're doing bit by bit. They do it by increasing ma you know, massive government spending, increase the size of government, uh, take over of the WHO. These amendments that are coming up uh, that are going to be voted on in 2024 on the WHO are frightening, and they they really risk taking away all of our sovereignty. Uh, people have to well, wake he, up, he, awaken to the dangers of the moment. He's right about that. He's right about the WHO thing. Mm -hmm. he, he refers to it as the WHO, which I always think of the band. <laughs> That's so funny. But he's, he's talking about the WHO. That rock opera sucks. I never <laughs> liked it. Tommy, what is that crap? <laughs> And uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, he's talking about the WHO news regulate, and it he's so that if you if you're just a casual observer of the news and you just watch CNN and MSNBC, and then you see a guy let's say something like that, you would think he's crazy. Mm -hmm. You would go, "What? There's the uh, the WHO is trying to take over our life?" Yes, 
Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, they already did it with lockdowns. They already did it. By the way, they were not supposed to do that. They have they know how to handle pandemics. Never did they say that there was there ever a consensus that you're supposed to do lockdowns. They made that up. This and they the made that up. This, taking. That's, <laughs> that's right. They, they made that up and it, to scare the hell out of everybody. Uh, so, they, so it would make them more... Uh, open to being vaccinated. Did, That's what that was about. Did and, you know, uh, and they and yeah. it was also an, another chance to uh, transfer wealth upwards because you could still buy everything you wanted, but you had to do it through a billionaire. You had to do it through Amazon or Target or Walmart. You central could, businesses. You had to do it through central businesses that they can control. Yeah. So you just you that or that can control you too. So go ahead. So Web. you remember you know when uh, Rockefeller. And Standard Oil was like the three quarters of all the oil come from Rockefeller, so we could shut the country down. Yeah, you know, before they broke it up into the honest oil companies we have today. Yeah, that's when it was yeah. Bad. the trust busting <laughs> yeah. is what yes. they called it. And uh, so I didn't know that po- all of public education, the Rockefeller Foundation, put that together because. And here's the thing: it's not like just somebody their interpretation of what they did. They wrote a goddamn memo. We want to make sure they're not artists or thinkers or whatever to get you. That's what the bell's for, to get you ready for your factory job uh-huh. and being in your. Uh, they've specifically designed it that really? way. Really? You mean public education? To yeah, make- the thing that doesn't work too good. That It was designed that way. Like, this has been the whole time. It's not like. It's just oh, to make obedient workers, like George Carlin said. It's exactly like he said, and they wrote it down in those words. Yeah. Like, it's not like a. This is like a top secret conspiracy. They said it in the goal. <laughs> It was back when they would openly say the stuff, like the weird eugenic stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. they would. They all talked about how. What's that? What was the guy's name who started the? It was the propaganda started. They uh, they took people yeah, who the were cigarette again, guy. Twenty seventeen, uh, the, the war. Nobody was for the World War One, and they were like, "We got to get these people for." Uh, and so they did. They put on a propaganda. What was that guy's name? He was the father of it, not Burnett. Um, no, he's he's the guy that helped the cigarette company with yeah, the, like doctor. I, uh, I'll, I'll think of it. He's a famous dude. Yeah, I know. I know. I have to know because I was an I was marketing anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so they nobody wanted the war, and then in six months they got everybody wanting to go to war with Germany, <laughs> and then the same thing they did it here a couple years ago. Uh, it was about they were going to somehow maybe put a tax on cigarettes or they were going to do something with healthcare and everybody was for it. And then they did this six months of commercials and they, they lost. Do you remember what I'm talking about, Craig? I do not. Edward Bernays. That's yes. it. Ah, there you go. Oh, there you go. The chat. The, they got a smart thing, chat. Rockefeller. Yeah. They also, or maybe it was Carnegie. I can't remember which one tried to simplify spelling. And it, it almost like they're converting it to stupid, the spelling we have today. Really? From yeah. like text. And Teddy Roosevelt was agreed with it. And uh, there's all these newspaper cartoons with Teddy Roosevelt like shooting holes in the dictionary. Really? But I, it struck me because I'm like, oh. Uh, and people kind of rebelled against it. Like they made fun of it when they tried to like, you know, misspell the words to make them shorter. But uh, then he, that's not new. Going just, we're changing the definitions and the spellings of everything. Everyone, people thought that was crazy. That some guy thought he could just pay and do that. <laughs> well, you know, when you it's talk like, about, it's not like you could just change. If you're yeah. a rich enough corporation, you can't just like get dictionaries to change the definition of words like vaccine, which they did. Oh, I guess you can. Actually, yeah. you can. They changed yeah. the definition of pandemic. If oh, did which they? They did. Yeah, yeah, they totally did. Um, but when he's talking about Rockefeller, too, as well, it just makes me think about the lockstep document. If you haven't seen the lockstep document written by the Rockefellers, I think it was in, came out in 2017. I'm not sure. But it laid out everything that pretty much happened. Really? They changed the, the animal. It was a bird, not a bat. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no but they, kidding. They laid it all out for you. This is why like some of the, the people we know, some of our friends, uh, you what, know, you Sam talk- Tripoli friends. Wait, are you talking about the swine? What is it? The The, the, the flu? The, lo- the lockstep document pretty much talks about a bird flu, a, a flu that comes from the bird and a pandemic breaks out. Okay. So it parallels what actually happened in society, which what they wanted to do was move us to change our whole way of doing things, make it more of a digital currency, make it the CBDCs, move people into you know these type of QR codes where they can be tracked and traced all over the place. A great reset, if you will. So, Oh, there you go. Oh, a great, like a reset. great reset. Yeah. The fourth Which, industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution, the great reset, the lockstep, and you know, and there's event two oh one, all these things that are talked about. I'm not saying I'm only speculating, but this is what Ron Johnson was just talking about too over here when he was saying they these elites want to do this to us. Well, I guess um, you guys shouldn't have all taken money from them the whole goddamn time and done whatever they wanted, and now you're saying something. Thanks. 
Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think we have to also remember that during this whole time, we closed down over a million small businesses. And more importantly, uh, I think the greatest sin is we let grandma and grandpa die alone. We couldn't even see them. It, you know, we they were kept away from us from this whole tragedy, this whole thing that happened. Now, I'm only going to speculate why, but because uh, they're going to spread I don't know exactly theories. why. That's why. Exactly. You gotta lock them away. Don't give grandma and grandpa a platform by visiting them. But I like Mary, Mary Williamson is going to get to the bottom of it, uh, oh, even though she doesn't think anybody lied. How do you get to the bottom of lies if you don't think anybody lied? That's kind of a neat trick. <laughs> <laughs> right? By the way, uh, yeah. how, what, that's gonna, isn't that going to curtail your investigation if, you're, if you don't think anybody lied? <laughs> you won't be looking for them. You have to ask and people, you, like, do you publicly say this or do you mean like, <laughs> are we talking publicly or privately <laughs> now? This is a private opinion. Yeah. This is how the sausage is made. But underneath that tweet, by the way, that video I played. That's what I was asking. The was FDA that? has not endorsed or authorized ivermectin for use yes, in treatment did. COVID-19. FDA, FDA has simply given yeah. the recommendation that ivermectin not be used. This does not forbid or recommend doctors take any action in prescribing the medication. Oh, okay. You find that's what this I was asking for. Like, so where that's is that? Because that sounds... That was underneath the video. So what the FDA yeah. is saying, we're not saying it treats COVID-19, but mm -hmm. we have to go back to treating ivermectin like we do every other drug. And for some reason, we tried to not treat ivermectin like every other drug. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. So what they're actually saying is, but we're going to go back to treating it like every other drug. Oh, that's right, because we're in court case and we have no... There's yeah. no godly reason. Well, all we these are? like rich people whim social rules that just start coming out right and left. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when they get to court how much they don't hold up. It's an, isn't it? Every single time they don't hold up. Yeah. I want to reiterate that the emergency youth authorization, right? It, this is under Section 564 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act right over here. When the secretary of HHS declares that an emergency use authorization is appropriate. Now, by the way, the reason why I left that in there is because in a lot of Medicare for All bills, the <clears> HHS, <throat> right now, the head of the HHS is Xavier Barrera. Just like in this situation, there's too much power kicked to this guy where he gets to make a decision, right? He may authorize unapproved medical products or unapproved uses of approval medical products to be used in emergency to diagnose, treat, or prevent serious or life-threatening diseases or conditions caused by CBRN threat agents when certain criteria are met, including, and this is very important right here, I have it in red, there are no adequate approved and available alternatives. So if it was known that COVID could be treated, if by it anything, could, by anything, including they, ivermectin, Hydroxychloroquine, oh. vitamin D, right, cocoa pebbles, zinc, anything. They can't have an emergency use authorization. They can't get that passed through. Right. Boy, it was they were luck, just lucky for them, huh? Yeah. That it turns out there wasn't any studies. I mean, there was a shit ton of studies that said it did work, but there was a handful of other studies that the FDA values more that said that ivermectin was dubious. Yeah, yeah. Doctor McCullough, one of the guys, I I kind of leaned on right out of the gate. Uh, a lot of great stuff coming from it. I want to also point out it wasn't just ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine. Take a look. Carl from who is in charge of um, <laughs> commerce operations in the White House called me early in the pandemic because the United States government had secured a stockpile, strategic stockpile of hydroxychloroquine. What? And he was very anxious to get this distributed out to Americans. You're kidding. And people within the White House, including Rick Bright, were actively mm. blocking his ability to do that. Rick Bright subsequently has joined the vaccine consortium Rockefeller Foundation. Oh. To give you an idea, Clive Palmer, a former member of parliament in Australia secured an entire uh, stockpile of hydroxychloroquine for the entire country of Australia. The Australian government seized it and destroyed the stockpile. Get it off the so what happened work. worldwide was a systematic suppression of early treatment in order to, I believe, um, front this vaccine agenda. If hydroxychloroquine did not work, if hydroxychloroquine did not work, these governments and these people wouldn't care. That's right. Right? Because if it was completely inert and it didn't work, they wouldn't care. They actually took illegal actions to prevent people from receiving hydroxychloroquine. And similar things happen with ivermectin. 
So this is, uh, uh, well, first of all, it doesn't treat, uh, oh. hydroxychloroquine doesn't treat it. But the second, he's wrong about that, but the, it is a good question is, uh, why did they it, Why did they care so much about that? Well, that's what I would tell people, right? I remember I was talking to a comedian friend of mine, um, and he was f for sure that ivermectin didn't treat COVID-19. And I was like, oh, what, wh why do you have an opinion on this? Like, do you know why you have an opinion on this? Because you're told to have an opinion on this. And where did your opinion come from? Did you read a study or did you hear Anderson Cooper tell you this on CNN? That's exactly where you got your information from. You got it from the Sanjay right Gupta. Yes. You got it from people who are sponsored by Big Pharma. Dr. Does, Gupta, yes. It doesn't make you suspicious that you have an opinion on a drug you never fucking heard of before? No, I always ask my doctor like, about how, various drugs. How does that not make you suspicious that they want you to have an opinion on a drug who cares go get your vaccine and let everybody else live their life why do you give a shit because the people that i hang out with have an opinion that's, and that's right. the right opinion to have and you, i like you, to hang out with them <laughs> i did ask question. these are all dumb questions jimmy I, <laughs> I did ask a lot of the doctors too as well you know if they forgave some of their fellow doctors for not going the extra dish, distance and looking at hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin uh -huh. because there was so much pressure from all those up at top. You know, just think about a doctor who got out of school who owns thousands oh my of God. dollars. They would send you a letter. There would be there would be medical boards that would send to, to doctors letter. You better stop. Do my doctor was prescribing it for me because I was vaccine injured and uh, she had to stop. They were pressuring her. The same shit. Yeah. They and so, so now I got to get now I got to get my ivermectin from uh, uh, in New York City all the way. I, I get it in the mail. Oh, do you know how much they're charging you a pill? Do you? Uh, no, but I can check. Yeah. yeah, pretty cheap in Mexico. I bet you it's pretty cheap. But yeah, you can get it cheap in Mexico too as well. There was a, the Obama doctor, the first doctor who was pr uh, prescribing uh, hydroxychloroquine in New York was Doctor Zelenko, and this happened by Mister Andrew Cuomo, Governor Andrew <laughs> Cuomo. He signed an executive order re restricting dispensing and bans pharmacists from dispensing hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine, uh, except when written as prescribed for a U.S. Food and Drug Administration. They did that with no indication. Other, they've done that with yeah. no other drug in the None. world. Yeah, they're pretty loose. Why? None. Like why all of a sudden? And by the way, again, we'll make the same point Dr. McCullough did. If it doesn't work, why do you give a shit, shit. if a doctor wants to prescribe it to somebody? Exactly. Why, it, do, why, it, do, why, yeah. would, why would Governor Andrew Cuomo care? The reason is because he's paid by Big Pharma, just like the Democratic Party, just like CNN, MSNBC, and Fox and News, Fox, and yeah. the New York Times, and the Washington Post. They're all paid by Big Pharma. That's why they all of a sudden they all had an opinion on hydroxychloroquine, and they wanted to restrict it. They did the same thing in California, and they say DeSantis is the fascist. Yeah. In California, they passed a law that threatening doctors if they practiced medicine. And everybody's saying, vote Democrat if you're voting against fascism. Democrats are the biggest fascists in the world. Yeah, they are. And they did the same thing in uh, Nevada. The board, a pharmacy, the guidance, they restricted it. Same thing. Um, and it's kind of crazy because you look at the chloroquine. Now, I was always questioning like what China's role has been in the origins and the COVID-19. A lot of that stuff's coming out right now. They're talking about that. I think I have a clip somewhere uh, in today's show. But in China, even though they had draconian lockdowns, they gave their, 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 their uh, patients chloroquine with a vitamin C drip, and they recovered quickly. That's what they had such low numbers. But here in Australia, they get rid of it. Here, they, they restrict you from getting it. Ohio, same thing. They're not going to allow it to go out. That's there. amazing. That's that shows you who's run, right there. Who who is running the country? Big pharma, big big corporations are running your country. Do you think Andrew Cuomo did that because he cared about the people, or he cared about the money he gets from big pharma? Wait. That's what that's what I'm talking about when I say our government is 100 percent corrupted. COVID was run 100 percent for the profit of big pharma. It wasn't to keep you healthy. Those people don't give a shit. That's why they told you to keep wearing masks. That's why they didn't. Tell you about any early treatments. Then it's why I didn't tell you to get your vitamin D up, or get your zinc up, or any, or or lose weight, yeah. or get in shape, or go outside and get some sun. That's why they didn't tell because they don't give a shit about your health. Big Pharma doesn't care. The people on your news channels don't care. Rachel Maddow doesn't care. The people at, at, in the no, they don't. The government doesn't care. There's a cabal of criminals who are conspiring against you. They already been doing it for my whole fucking life. Now we're just seeing it because they're doing it right out in the open. Yeah. And still half the country doesn't want to see it. Yeah. And as soon as this happened, 
Everybody knew what to do. They all knew how to play ball. They From all the knew hospitals to the media. They all knew. They all knew what they did. They all got in line. They all got their piece of cheese, especially the hospitals, too, as well. They just sent you home, said, take some aspirin. And when your lips get blue, then come back. We'll stick you on a ventilator, shoot you up with some run death is near, right. and then we'll make money. And they got bonuses. Bonuses on all these things. If you got a positive COVID test, then you got a 20% bump on this all the treatments. True. This is all true. And HHS was the one who decides who got the money through the CARES Act. And yes, what do you call them? Donnie Tiny Hands back yes. in the days? Donald he Trump. He signed the goddamn bill. He went along with it, it all. So I don't want to hear it. Bill. So this, this <laughs> idea that Donald Trump is some kind of libertarian savior of freedom, he is not. Donald Trump went along with the mandates. Donald Trump went along with the warp speed. Donald Trump went along with the suppression of all that stuff. And Donald Trump went along with lockdowns. Am I wrong? Yep. He, has, has he, re he hasn't renounced any of it. He hasn't as renounced as any, as any of it. He it back. Operation Warp Speed. And what McCullough talked about the other day when he was just talking about the whole hydroxychloroquine situation, and he talked about Dr. Richard Bright. Donald Trump signed an executive order trying to get hydroxychloroquine out to everybody. Dr. Richard Bright, along with Janice Woodcock, changed the executive order to make it for people who were already sick weeks into the COVID, days into the COVID, to give them the hydroxychloroquine, not with the proper cocktail, and then too much, so it failed purposely they so, tanked it on purpose and donald trump didn't do shit when they changed his and he didn't he never had that vaccine uh inquiry that uh rfk jr said he should have and he agreed to he was gonna go hey let's have an inquiry in the senate about the safety safety of vaccines and i was like you wouldn't that make everyone feel better because of course we're going to find out how safe and effective vaccines well, Biden are Biden said it, you know back when they were saying what a bad idea all of this was because trump was doing it <laughs> yes yeah. Uh, he said, as long as there's transparency. That was yes. Biden's big thing. As long as there's transparency. transparency. Yeah. But there Biden gets more from the pharmaceutical industry than any anybody out there anyways. He's one of his top donors, the military industrial complex well, he, and he Big Pharma. On that one. So yeah. right. he, he, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, the reason why I put up this clip right over here too as well, because a lot of people say, Fox, 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 they're different. They're different. They're They've not come different. Around. They're not any different at all. Here is Sean not Hannity. When it comes to this, Tucker Carlson yeah. was different when it came to this, not Fox News, and yeah. that's why they fired him. Did Maria Bartolo Romo? I know she said there she took it and she got over COVID. Yeah. In two yeah. Days. Has she been saying that right along, mm. or is she just now saying? I don't it? know. I don't watch Maria. Yeah. Either do I, I can tell you this much: when the last time I got Omicron, me and my 83 year old mother, sorry, mom, for telling you that, Gage, we took the the protocols from Mr. McCullough, which was ivermectin, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, quercetin. And a little of the solution up the nose, because Omicron oh, right. lived up here. It was one day of symptoms. We knocked it out. We just had to rest for the next four or five days. And we used those yeah. protocols right over there. But those, but that doesn't yeah. treat COVID. It doesn't you're, treat you're COVID-19. No, you're so. not saying it. You're just saying that was a coincidence. It was just a coincidence that I did that's that when it happened. That's, and, a, that's yeah. what they call a coincidence. Well, you should keep getting uh, more boosters. I hope everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody should get their boosters. Don't stop getting them, especially if you're a good vaccine supporter so now yeah everybody goes fox news fox news fox news no they're sponsored by the same people that's exactly the same right Same people are paying their bills watching this town hall debate when all of a sudden rfk is you know talking about you know ivermectin Hannity tries to shut it down quickly and pivot to, whoa, 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 wait, that's not true. He's the best, that guy. With his CIA lapel pin. Check, check him out. So if they had admitted that hydroxychloroquine, which they knew from day one, that it worked against, uh, against COVID, they well, could they not they have killed their 88 Henry billion Ford dollars. Hospital, what? after the fact, came out and said that taken early, it mitigated symptoms. That's what I took out of that. And there were other studies that followed. I never saw one on ivermectin that showed it was effective. However, monoclonal antibodies seemed to be a, a therapeutic that worked very well, but that was also experimental. Well, the, the thing is, you don't know about those studies because the press is not reporting them. But you go to Merrill Nass's website, Dr. Merrill Nass, who's negative. <laughs> Who's an expert in bioterrorism or Harvey Ridge, who's one of the leading, world's leading epidemiologists at Yale. And they have lists of 199 studies that show that ivermectin is, is on average about 85% effective against, uh, against serious disease and death. And four, 400 studies that show the same about hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. I got a break. We'll come back. More of our... <laughs>
Get to the get to the break soon, right now. He's saying would, stuff we don't want him here. Get to the break. Go to the break. And I'm gonna guess he's gonna go to a big pharma funded uh, commercial. But uh, we have to just say that uh, Sean Hannity is right at there, and RFK Jr. is wrong. That uh, the, the study. We do have that, to go to commercial break. We do have to go. to commercial break. <laughs> We gotta do that. Go ahead. I just you know. Uh, by the way, we uh, we had on the the CDC last show. We talked about the CDC director, the new CDC director. Oh yeah. Thinks that the recommendations are coming out in September. That's going to be recommending a flu and COVID vaccine shot yearly. Yeah, yearly. The, the triple yearly. Dem- I think it's three actually. The triple demic. Yeah, there was the triple demic. That's right. We three covered shots that. that one. So I just I just wanted to talk to all my asshole comedian friends who t- t- told people to not ask questions about vaccines or COVID. You still getting your boosters? Oh, so it's okay for you? Did you get informed? Did you do some of your own research? Did you look into the boosters or what? What happened? Because you're not getting them. No one's getting them. And so why is it okay for you now to go against what Dr. Fauci and what Stephen Colbert says? Uh, But before it was you couldn't. If you did that, you were some kind of crazy uh, grifter and an anti-vaxxer. But now nobody's taken the booster. And so but so apparently now it's okay to think for yourself. But there was just a time when it wasn't okay to think for yourself. The, The actual answer is it's always okay to think for yourself and go fuck those people and those comedians who shamed people for thinking for themselves. Those people aren't real comedians. When they're doing that, they're doing propaganda, just like a fucking Nazi. Uh, I'd like to say to the camera, uh, I'd like to call on the great Keith Olbermann to put out another great video, getting his there you three go. shots. Oh, my Lord. And admonishing everyone else for being uh, a scared. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, we have a little cartoon over here. There's you. Snoopy's playing the part of Jimmy Dore, and there's his friend. And Charlie Brown's, uh, Jimmy's friend, saying the CDC and the FDA says, and Snoopy goes, just shut the fuck up. Just stop right there. And it would be one thing if those comedians who shamed other people for getting informed apologized for it now once everyone realizes how stupid that was. And they can't, they go, oh, my God, I can't. Just like Tim Robbins. Like, oh, my God, I went against every liberal value I ever had in my life. And I became an authoritarian maniac shaming people for trying to get informed about experimental medical treatments they're being forced to take or lockdowns they're being imposed upon by the oligarchy and the establishment. And so but that they're not doing that. They're all pretending like that it was OK what they did. And no, we're still idiots. Yeah, just do the thing. (laughs) It would go a long way, though. It really would go a long way if they did that, because right now this is I mean, think about it. If you really want to come to fruition and and you've put that stuff in your body, how are you going to feel? It's going to be hard for you to come and admit anything that you you possibly could have been wrong. That's that's so you're right. Leaders, people, people they admire, you know, comedians that they've had a, uh, you know, some type of connection to for them to come forth and say something. It would be big right now. And now is the friggin time. But you know what is funny is you watch people like Dana Carvey uh, make fun of Fauci now and how crazy all the stuff is. Well, but not when it really mattered. Isn't that something? And I love that's not a slam on Dana Carvey. I'm just saying it's funny that now they'll do those jokes, but they won't really do those jokes. You know what I mean? They won't go, hey, we were all lied to. Yeah. Hey, that guy's a criminal and nothing they ever said made sense. And yet we all did it to ourselves. How the hell does the many montages of all these people passing out on TV they, they just say that that was always happening, but nobody ever put him in a montage before. P- people will say, oh, these athletes always were dropping. Oh, look at Ben. Uh, b- b- uh, what was that guy? Uh, nobody put it in a montage? I find that hard to believe ben that who? no one would have put ben, that in a montage. Who was that young? Uh, he played for the Boston Cell. He got he never made it to. He, oh, you're talking about. Uh, uh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Reggie, Reggie Lewis is the one who had the heart thing a long time ago and fell. But no, it was this guy. I uh, forget his name, but they blamed it on cocaine. Um, but you're not talking about Ben Len Ben Bias? Len, Len Bias. Len Bias. Len that's Bias. it. Len yeah. Bias. It wasn't cocaine. Len Bias. The Len, pe- yeah. the people will say now. Oh, remember Len Bias? You mean one guy thirty fucking years ago? I know. And I, I find <laughs> hard to believe one right. guy. Did one, one guy one line thirty of years ago. And died. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But it's anyway, it's a bit far fetched. But anyway, uh, so and no one ever is talking about excess deaths. If you bring up excess death with anybody, they don't know what you're talking about. Just like what RFK Jr. said there, it's because it's not being reported by exactly. the, the corporate news. Exactly. But it is being reported in medical journals. Yep. Don't forget. And, yeah. And but it's not being reported yeah. on corporate news. So people don't. When you talk to them about excess deaths, and I'm telling people that there's ex, meaning that they know. Anyway, I don't. Listen, we got to stop on, this. Jimmy Lizzo we, fat shamed one of her dancers. That's we right. Have bigger things going on. He's right. Let's let's move on. I just wanted to show this right here. Because 
because everybody's like, well, what were they supposed to do? Well, in uh, El Salvador, you can see this right here. This is a kit that they were handing up, and you can see it right here. The yeah. Ivermectina. And they gave you a bunch of other vitamins, whatnot, and they passed it out, and that's why they didn't have a problem. They did that in Mexico, too. Mexico. Oh. They did it in Mexico, India, El Salvador. You think I would trust those countries just because <laughs> yeah. they have all the same drugs way cheaper, and yeah. I do drive there to get them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Ivermectin hydroxychloroquine does not treat COVID-19. Follow your FDA and CDC guidelines. Keep getting guidelines. more boosters and get them a lot. Okay. I hope you know that's the message. Come see our live shows. We're going to be in Chicago, Rosemont, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, New York City, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, Stamford, Toronto, Toledo, Detroit, St. Louis, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets.